So in the previous video, we started our upload section where the user could upload a file. And over in our document controller, we left our store method looking like this. Now this is quite messy and a lot going on in the controller. So what we want to do is refactor this to an action. Now the action pattern, sometimes referred to as the executor pattern. So if you're familiar with the command pattern, this is very similar, but it's got the added side effect that it's going to be persisting data which you wouldn't normally do within the command pattern. But don't worry if you don't understand any of these design patterns. I'm going to show you now moving all of our store logic out of the controller into a dedicated action. But over in the root of our project, if we come under app, we want to create a new folder here called actions. So I'm giving this name of actions with a capital A. And then inside of here, I'm going to create a save document action. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this save documents action. PHP. And inside of here, I'm just going to open up my PHP tags, zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. And we're going to namespace it into our actions folder. So we're going to say app backslash actions. And let's just create our class. It's going to be a class. And we're going to call this save document action after the file name. And then inside of here, we're just going to create one method. And that one method is going to be called execute. When we call our action, this is what we're going to be running. So let's create that now. So we're going to do a public function. And I'm calling this execute. And this is going to take in an array. And I'll explain why we're going to be passing this an array later on. And we're going to call this upload. So we're going to take in an array of data, which is going to be the data from the upload form. And this is going to return a bool, as we're simply going to return true once it's saved. OK, now inside of this method, we just need to bring over our logic from our controller. So back over in our controller under the store method, we're going to leave the validation here in the controller, but then everything else we're going to copy. I'm going to copy right the way down to the document save and leave the redirect here. So let's cut this out of this file and then paste it into our execute method. So now there's a few things we need to change because we're passing in an array here and we're not actually passing over the entire request object. We can no longer use that request object. So let's replace this with upload and this is referencing the array that we're passing in now obviously we don't have any methods on this because it's an array so we just need to go into the array and get out the document now we need to do this every time we reference the request and there's two more of them so here we need to change this to upload and then obviously instead of getting a property we want to get an item out of the array called file name and finally the same again down here when we're saving it to the database instead of the request we're going for upload and we want to get the file name out of the upload but the reason we're passing in an array here is so we're decoupling this action from the http layer but what this allows us to do is test this action a lot easier so to test this action we now only need to pass in an array with the needed information if we were going to be passing in the request object, we'll have to build up an entire request object and then pass that over. But at the moment, it still requires us to mock up an upload file HTTP object. But this is a good start and moving us in the right direction to decoupling it away from the HTTP request object. So with all this logic now moved out of the controller, this gives us an extra benefit. And the benefit is that we can now call this from anywhere in our application and all of the upload code is kept in one single place. So for the moment, while the application is still small, we're probably actually going to only be calling this from one place, and that's in our document controller. But imagine if you expand upon this app and you were bringing files in automatically on a cron job, for example. You can then call this action from your command line job that you create. So this just extracts it away and makes it much easier to use from anywhere in your application. So the final thing we actually need to do now is call this action from our controller. We're back over in our controller, where we removed everything here is just where we need to call our new save document action. So first of all, at the top of the file, let's bring it in. So we want to say use, and we want to use our app actions, and we want to use our save document action. Now we're bringing it in up here. We can just inject this into our store method. So coming back down to our store method, passing in the request, and we also want to pass in our save document action. We can just say save document action because at the top of our file here we told it that we want to use our app action save document action when we inject it in here php and laravel know where the action sits 
So we can just pull it in here without typing out the full namespace. We'll pass that in as document action. And then down here, we can just call that document action. And then we want to call our execute method on there. And we want to pass in an array. And we want to pass in the request as an array. So we're going to call the request. And on that request, there's a handy method called to array. So let's call that method to array. And that'll take everything in the request, convert it into an array, and then pass it over to our document action. So let's just actually test that this still works how we expect it to. Go back over an application, I'm just going to upload. Now just put in another text file here, I'm going to hit save. Oh, and I've got a bit of an error here. I didn't bring in the document model in the action. So let's jump back over to the action. So under the save document action, you can see here we're creating a new document, but it doesn't know what that means. So at the top of the file, we want to say use app models and we want to bring in our document model. So let's save on that and then just refresh our page. And again, another little mistake here. I didn't actually return anything, but I told the method we would be returning a bool. So back over in our action, you can see here I've got a return type of bool. So just underneath here, under the document save, let's just return true. And while we're here, this is actually optional. You don't have to return anything from this method if you don't want to. So you can actually leave that out if you don't like the way that reads. So back over to our application again, just hit refresh. You can see that redirects us back to our index page. Now, if we just have a look in our database, and again, I'm using Beekeeper Studio here, but you can use any database GUI that you like, or even just a CLI. As you can see, I now have my second file in here called cache. So that's completely tidied up our controller now. And we've moved all of our logic outside of our controller layer and put it into the action. And then we can call that action just using one line from anywhere else in our application. So we're not going to be repeating that logic over and over. So in the next video now, let's look at completing our front end because we've now got an upload process, but we're not actually listing any of the documents out. So let's look at how we can list the documents out and also add in some pagination. If you are enjoying this series, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get updates as and when future videos are released on this series. Also, check out the other series on my channel. I have a lot of Laravel related content on there. And remember, this course does come with some extra premium content that is completely optional, and that is over on Udemy. And I'll pop a link in the description with a 60% discount code for the first 100 signups. And you can watch the entire series straight away without any adverts.